Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Uh, I want to talk about stop dados. Um, last time I, sh I showed a, a through dado um, and uh, several people commented, oh yeah, you know, you could do that with a plane. And yes, I could do that with a plane. I wanted to show people a little simpler process with just a saw chisel and a mallet. Um, but yes, you can get a plane that has knickers on the side to, to cut those out. Um, but one thing you can't do with a plane is you can't make a stop dado. So I want to show you today how I go about making one of those. So just as before, I've made two marks on either side of what I want to cut, and then I made a depth mark on this side. And on this side, I made a stop mark. I didn't make a depth mark on the other side because I want to stop at that point. It's about a quarter inch, a quarter inch in, and I will be having a shelf that sits in this dado and stops up against the front so this, the shelf doesn't stick all the way out across the front. Now, the first thing I did off video was I cut this on a diagonal. Um, sorry, for some reason the footage from that didn't take. Um, so it's basically just like cutting before, but rather than going all the way across on the front, um, I keep the nose up and I just go down to my stop gauge on this line. And then I stop about you know, eighth inch or a quarter inch away from my stop line. I don't want to go too far forward because any mark you make past that line will show up. So the very next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my one inch chisel. And rather than putting it right into the marking gauge line, I'm actually going to put it about a sixteenth of an inch away on the other side of that saw kerf that I just made. And this way, when I pound down, um, it wants to move that way, and it's not going to move past the marking gauge line. If I put it right into the marking gauge line, then it will move the marking line over. So I want to start a little, way from, a little ways away from it. Tap. Do it on the other side. One good tap, and as I moved it, that moved the mark, that moved the uh, the material over towards the marking gauge line. Now that I've kind of cleared that out, I am going to break from tradition a little bit and go right into that marking gauge line, and give it another tap right here, and that will define the edge of that line. So now that I have that line defined, I can basically do the same thing all the way back along the side, and I'm going to uh, continue along. So now that I've made a stop cut on either side all the way along, I'm going to come back in with the chisel and I'm just going to pare out the waste here and here. And I'm only going to come back a little ways because the saw cut went down deep enough here, I don't have to mess with it. I'll come back and do that from both sides and that will allow me to then cut down a little farther. So now that I've removed the waste, I'm going to put this back into that marking gauge line and I'm going to go down one step farther. and then repeat the process of removing the waste again. I'm going to keep doing that back and forth until I get close to depth, or what I think is depth. So I'm going to do that and come back. So now that I've actually chopped in from both sides and I'm pretty close to depth, this is going to seem a lot like it did for the through dado. I'm going to come back here about halfway down to the stop mark. Oops, let me tap those. And I'm going to be very careful here. I don't want to go too far and blow out this little piece here. So I'm actually going to turn it over. I'm going to keep the bevel away from me. And just a tap here, tap here, tap close to the marking gauge line. Almost on the marking gauge line, but not quite. Then I'm going to turn the chisel around so the bevel is now towards me. Go right into the marking gauge line. Quick tap. Move it a little away from the marking gauge line. Right down into the marking gauge line. And now I am, I have a wall at the end here where the marking gauge line is at. So once I've done that, I'm going to come back here halfway again to the marking gauge line. So now I'm about a sixteenth away. I'm going to try and keep it level. And then I've got these wisps over here that are, aren't connected. That's what the saw didn't cut and my chisel didn't cut. So I'm just going to set this in here. Tap. Tap, moves those, move them with the chisel. So then I'm gonna, gonna come in again, halfway again to the marking gauge line, so I'm like a 30 second away from it now. And I'm just gonna kinda clean out this entry so that I can bring in the hand router. And that will go right into the marking gauge line. 
and I can rock it back and forth. I can tell I'm not down deep enough on the two sides, so I'm just going to slow this, throw this in there. And then I can come in and clean this out. So there is your stop dado, and I'm going to pull it out of this so you can actually see how it fits. So now we can slide it down on and into place, and you can see how that joint fits. And I am very, very pleased with that. Happy, happy, happy. So there's a stop dado. Seems a little intimidating at first, but it's actually fairly simple. And once you kind of play around with it and try a few things out, you'll see how easy they really are. Um, this I did cut out um, some of the chunks in it, but all told, this took me about eight minutes to make. That's not something you can do with a table saw, and uh, it'd be pretty difficult to do with most power tools to get a nice flush bottom. One of the important things about them is you do want to have a flush bottom because that's the only long grain that's going to be gluing to the long grain of the shelf. Um, so yeah, you want to make sure that's done right. So I hope you like this. It is one of my favorite cuts. Although I say that about a lot, I think one of my favorite, my favorite cut is whatever cut I happen to be working on at the moment. And uh, yeah, so if you did like the video, please hit like and think about subscribing. I want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are an incredible encouragement and have helped me out more than you might know. If you want to find out more about Patreon, you can click on the link right over here. If you like this video, you might find out that you like one of the others. And until next time, have a wonderful day.